Um, so a little bit about what I do for Copper Canyon. Um, I am the liaison between the press and the media. So I work really closely with the media um, to help advocate for the poetry collections that Copper Canyon publishes. Um, I am an in-house publicist for them. Uh, that distinction is kind of important, especially for those of you who might be publishing with a house who does not have an in-house publicist uh, or dedicated press person. There are freelance publicists that you can hire on a per-project basis. So if you, if anything I'm saying in the next hour or so, uh, it's not offered to you by your press, there are other options. So I just wanted to um, throw that out there. So in addition to working with the media, and what that means is I'm going and speaking and having conversations with important reviewers, editors, um, key people who write for high, pre high distribution, high readership publications. Um, I'm pitching our books to them. And that involves either meeting them in person emailing them or uh, doing it over the phone. It just really depends on their preference and if we know each other already, if I already have a relationship with them or if Copper Canyon has a relationship with them already. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more, I think, about like pitching and how that, how that whole genre works. Um, so in addition to working with the media, I also work very closely with the authors. Um, I'm one of their main points of communication uh, between what's happening in-house and what is happening in the world with their book as well. Um, so it could be anything from questions, concerns, like when you think of a traditional publicist, someone who deals with like a celebrity or something like that, uh, they're fielding a lot of like potential issues, doing damage control, um, but also advocating and helping to connect that book and that poet with the rest of the world on a larger scale. Um, something that the poet themselves might not be able to uh, dedicate a ton of time to for whatever reason, or they just don't have the same uh, like manpower behind it. So I'm working a lot with the authors. Um, and also, so in addition to advocating for the books, I also um, do publicity for the press itself. So anything that might happen that's Copper Canyon specific. So let's say we got a really amazing like $2 million donation, which I know you're in here. I know you're in here. Um, <laughs> it would be my job to spread the word and say, hey, this really amazing thing happened at Copper Canyon. Here is why we should all know and care about this, and here's why it's, it's promoting poetry on a larger scale. So it's, it's sort of, um, it's a lot focused on the author, and on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm doing mostly author publicity, but I'm also doing um, work that is related to the press as well. And along with that goes managing the social networks, um, which I will definitely be talking about because that's really crucial in this day and age um, to helping to promote yourself and creating a brand uh, also. So I'm also um, managing So I'm, I'm wondering if, if maybe we could just go down the line again and you guys could, uh, I'm always fascinated in the numbers a little bit. So you were talking about the slush pile and you were also talking about solicitation and I imagine there's other um, slush pile and solicitation uh, numbers. And I just wanted to see what we're all up against when we're trying to get published by, uh, by you. And, and William, certainly the numbers for the uh, contest each year, just an average number. If it, might, it might help us sort of visualize what we're, what we're talking about. <clears throat> okay, so there's a lot of different numbers I could go off of here. Um, so we just, Copper Canyon just started an open reading period that they open a couple months close whenever we have as many manuscripts as our, we can read and our staff capacity can um, get through. So it's, it's a less tangible like deadline or you know, it's, it's really more rolling. But we started that uh, two years ago now and um, our open reading periods, the first two brought in 1,500 submissions. So of those 1,500, we chose two. Um, and so don't let that discourage you from submitting to our, um, open reading period. Um, but that's just to say that those, so our open reading period is debut, pe de debut books. So people who have never published a book before and established poets. So we chose Jericho Brown, um, 
in the last reading period, and he had already had a first book out that had been had been very well received. But we also chose Camille Rankine, who had never had a book out before. So there is not just people who, um, there's a whole bunch of people that are submitting to that same reading period at the same time. There is other reading periods that are less, um, that are more focused on one specific type of writer, like you're debuting or you're, you've already had a second book or something like that. Um, and I think, yeah, so that's what, that's what our numbers have been for the open reading period. Um, other than that, you know, every, our, our editor does read other manuscripts, um, but it's more solicitation based. So he has to, um, seek seek you out to read your work um, and we publish eight to ten books a season and a season in the publishing world is like fall winter spring summer so there's fall winter is one season spring summer is another so eight to ten books each one of those seasons okay um, I don't want to actually I'm gonna pass the buck to the fellow editors um, on the panel because this is not really my expertise. However, there are some things on a general level that I just wanna throw out there because they are common. Um, okay, does anybody, does everybody go to the AWP conference? Okay, so please don't come up to the publishers behind the tables and force your manuscript on them. <laughs> Number one thing, that is just real talk that that really doesn't help, that that in, in real time, that publisher can't spend or dedicate their eyes to your work as much as it deserves at that moment. So that's something that's actually really common, um, specifically at Copper Canyon, so yeah. Um, and also, it's I agree totally with cover letters, and I know um, at a lot of, uh, for full length collections, um, there is an emphasis, I think, that's put on publications that you have some poems published elsewhere in the world. Um, so advice-wise, it would be to consistently be sending your work out to get poems published elsewhere. Because a lot of full length, I'm, I'm sure that it does matter that this, this poet is willing to put their stuff out there, and not just a full length collection, but really have their hand in the wider community of the poetry industry. Um, let's say that these fine folks get a, an acceptance letter and you had the privilege of accepting their work and they're gonna be published in Lit or by Copper Canyon or Four Away Books or the contest. Um, what, so, so they've written the great cover letter, they've written the great poetry. What, what can poets do beyond that, and I think, you know, this sort of gets at the marketing and, and publicity sort of angle a little bit. What can poets do to sort of make, and, and Kelly, I'm kind of directing this at you, but it's certainly the others have, uh, you know, publicity sort of worked into their jobs as well. What can poets do to sort of make your job easier and therefore um, make their experience at the press or the magazine more successful? Right, and so, um, it's worth noting that a lot of poetry publishers in the U.S., and maybe this is the same in the U.K., um, don't actually have a dedicated press person. So also I want to give advice for folks in here that will be handling their own publicity for their books, even if they get picked up by a house. Um, so there's a lot of different... I, I want to give actually some concrete advice because this is... Um, this is a question that the authors, especially debut poets who are, have been accepted by Copper Canyon, the first thing they ask is, what, I, what can I do to help? And with us, I see publicity as an entirely collaborative experience. Like, we walk arm in arm together, a poet and I, into this world of competition. And sometimes, um, I, I like how you says like, the poor cousin of <laughs> um, other genres. Because sometimes the media doesn't always receive poetry books and that's the first thing they want to do a review on. Um, so it's really about seeking out some sort of competitive edge to, to, to make sure that you're in, in, in received in the world in a way that will allow you to continue writing, fulfilling your passion, um, and connecting with readers. So first thing is to establish a social media um, personality, persona, whatever you want to call it. Um, this sounds uh, like really obvious, especially for those of you who probably already are using Facebook or already using Twitter. Um, but it's really key, it's really crucial. And I, and I really have to drill this home because that is one of your platforms, your personal platforms for advocating for your work. Um, and also establishing a balance between self-promotion constantly and 
uh, just subtle reminders. Hey, this is the book that's about to come out. Here's what my cover looks like. Um, here is when my release date is. Um, these are the readings that I'm going on. So simple reminders to the people who are already your friends, maybe your family, what you're doing, why it's important, um, because these people already support you. Like More likely than not, the people that follow you are already people who support you. Um, and that really is one of the, the main things that you can do is to have that social media presence. Um, in addition to that, um, going and doing readings consistently. So many folks in here might not, I don't know, maybe I didn't know this. You can seek out readings and pitch yourself to them. You can tell them, I am interested in reading for such and such reading series. Um, I am working on a book or I have a book forthcoming and I think I would fit really well. And you can actually ask them to come read. And I fully encourage this. This isn't a practice that's like looked down on or anything. This is something that a lot of poets, really well-known poets right now are doing is asking if they can come read at certain readings. When you do those readings, it's all about exposure. People now know your work. They know your voice. They decide whether they love it or they hate it. They know your name. And it also is an opportunity to connect with your fellow readers. And maybe you're reading with someone who has a bazillion books out and has bazillion awards. And so then you have that connection with them and you have a relationship with someone who might also be able to help promote your book further. Also, maybe they teach, they can incorporate it into their curriculum. Um, doing readings is really important. So one of the first things that we talk about with our authors um, is uh, establishing a reading tour. And the reading tour, they, the author at Copper Canyon does all of the booking and all of the planning for it. So that is entirely in their court, and it's definitely something um, to consider. Also, when you're at a reading, and there's so many in New York, there's probably one every single day, um, twice a day, um, going and maybe approaching the readers and just after the reading is done, having a conversation with them, talk to them about their work, maybe learn a little bit about their story. Again, it's all about connections and networking and helping your book be seen and noticed and your name be seen and noticed by someone who otherwise didn't know you. Um, and uh, let's see, consistently applying for awards and fellowships, especially for those of you whose book will be published and does get picked up somewhere. Um, making sure that you're on top of your game in the community and not um, that it's important to you to keep your name um, out there in the world because this helps the press as well. So it helps your relationship with the press if you are um, seeking out opportunities to do a residency or you get a fellowship. Um, and also it helps you personally. So you're establishing yourself, establishing yourself in the world. Um, other than that, I think that the most successful books has been, again, a partnership between the press and the connections we have and their personal um, Rolodex. Does anybody even have a Rolodex anymore? I don't know. Uh, their iPhone contact list? I don't know. Um, their, their network and yours and combining that together and really going full force um, whenever the book comes out. So there's a lot of overlap there between people who have not yet been published and what you can do to help yourself with your name recognition and folks who, even whenever you have been picked up, that's still things that you can do, some steps you can take. Um, okay, so the first, to answer the first part, and this, I, I don't know if you guys have a perspective on the agent question. Most poets do not, in the US anyways, we don't, they don't have agents. Um, the bigger, so we have, um, we work in collaboration with an agent for W.S. Merwin with Copper Canyon, and, and so part of that function for him is getting him the advances that he needs and, and working with a booking agent for his, so for his actual um, readings because he's at a, a certain level in his career where he requires that kind of specialized, professionalized attention. Um, but most of our poets do not have agents, no, and they don't come to us via agencies or agent editors or agents that way. Um, and so this, to answer this, <laughs> this is going to be a heartbreaker. Um, so a good, you said, the question was, what is a, a good selling, like a good number for a, a well-selling book a, of poetry? Um, we would be happy with uh, 1,500 copies being sold. And a really well-selling would be like 8,000 
to 10,000, but that's like astronomical. That's really, that's a really well-selling book. So 